Hello, welcome back to another What's New in Inventor 2018 video from Excitec. And this time we're looking at AnyCAD, which is a technology that was introduced in Inventor in 2016 version, um, which allowed you to associatively reference Creo, SolidWorks, Katia files, and a few others. Now there's a few more additions to the AnyCAD collaborative uh, set of tools. This is the ability to reference newer Inventor files. Um, in Inventor 2017, you can reference an Inventor 2018 file. We'll take a look at that. And also the ability to place, as if it was any other component, an AutoCAD 2D DWG into an Inventor assembly and constrain to it as if it was any other component. Very cool. And that's associative as well. So let's take a little bit of a dive into this and I'll show you in Inventor how this works in a moment. So first off, the AnyCAD for Inventor. This is really simple. A file you save in Inventor 2018 can be uh, placed into an Inventor 2017 assembly. You can add additional features into the files because it's simply using the derived technology as, it, as if you've derived a SolidWorks or a Creo file using the AnyCAD technology. Um, so very cool. So of perhaps of slightly more interest to most people not working across Inventor platforms is the ability to place AutoCAD DWGs straight into Inventor assemblies. So previously you had to create a new part file, hit the import command, import a DWG into the part file on the plane of your choice, project the DWG lines into a sketch before you could extrude them or reference them in any way. Now there's no need to do that. The process is much shorter. You can simply just use the place component command in an assembly, place the DWG in and then constrain to it without projecting sketch lines. Um, the constraints will, will stick if the DWG changes because the link is associative. You can place multiple DWGs into an assembly to reference you can even use the joint command as, a, as opposed to the constraint command if you want to position components based off the DWG. Very cool. Let's take a look in Inventor and see how this works. So I've got an empty assembly here. I'm simply going to place. And here's the thing that's new. I can place AutoCAD DWG files. So if I find a, I've got two DWGs that were created from Revit. One's a ground floor and one's a first floor of a uh, building. So if I place one on the original, on the origin plane, it's nice and fast. That's dropped in in a, a second or two. I now want an offset plane to place the first floor DWG in. So I'm going to use the plane tool offset by, um, let's just say 4.2 meters. And then you do actually need a point to specify where the center of the DWG will be. So I'm going to place a point on the intersection of this offset plane, that plane, and that plane there. And so now I've got a point uh, for the center of the DWG to make sure the origins are in the right place. And I'm going to use place command again and bring in my first floor DWG, place it on that offset work plane, pick the, off the uh, work point, and I've now got uh, two DWGs the first floor and the ground floor DWGs in my inventor assembly. You can see it's quite fast. Um, I can now bring in components on top of that. So let's see if I change my files of type, I'll bring in an inventor file. I can drop that down and I can start constraining this now. Let's just spin that round. Um, This is actually working fine here, but what I did find is that uh, sometimes you can have problems dragging files around if you've got really big DWGs. A nice tip um, to prevent lag when you're dragging components around is to always ground these DWGs. That will speed things up immensely if you are having problems. Um, and also, in addition to that, don't ever rotate the screen while you've got those files selected. You see if I'm trying to rotate with it selected, that creates a big lag. So definitely unselect them and you'll be fine with rotating them. So if I now want to constrain to my DWG, 
I, will, I won't show you the constraint tool. Constraint does work, but I'll use a joint here just because it's slightly more interesting. And I'm going to joint between, for instance, that point there. And I want to position my reception desk somewhere in here. If I can't get those disks in the right place, then I can uh, right click offset origin. I'm just going to pick this place here and I want that desk to be positioned somewhere about here. Let's see if when that, if I right click and say continue, that should give me the the uh, the joint there, and I just need to align it then. So I'm just going to choose how I want this aligned. So I'll pick it like that and then flip it round. Okay, and then I might need to actually go back and choose a slightly different offset and right click continue. Okay, and that is now rigidly jointed based off this origin point here. Now if, so I can't move it around here, now if the original DWG changes, which I'm just going to do, then it will update. So if I right click and open in AutoCAD the file, so that's a new option as well. If I right click and open it there, then what I can do is move the geometry that positioned that desk. Now I'm just going to do a, a a bulk move to pretend here but I've moved all that geometry if I save this file in AutoCAD now if I head back into Inventor um, now what I can do is just hit update you see it knows it needs an update and when I update this this desk is going to move based off the AutoCAD geometry over there okay so it all works obviously if you delete the um, lines that you're referencing then the constraint will fall over and just like any other constraint in Inventor, you'd have to redefine it and reposition it. What I really like about this uh, tool, this ability to place multiple DWG overlays, in addition to this, is that you can, you could place DWGs for elevations of a building as well. You don't have to just work with plan views, which is the difference between this and the factory utilities, which also allow um, collaboration between DWGs and inventor layouts. So the ability to use DWGs on multiple planes could make this very powerful and then constrain components in elevation or plan view. Very cool. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot.